Good morning, one and all. I saw yesterday that they actually had like snow in San Diego. Well, for those of you in Michigan, Northern Michigan or Minnesota, in the case of Eli and in Penther, welcome to our snowy hell. <laughs> just, I just like a, a white wilderness out there and I should be out there shoveling and snow blowing and cleaning out the bed of my pickup truck so I could load stuff into it for a trip today. But it's so much nicer being here in the warm, warm house. Oh, violins. I'm going to put a plug in to the fellow that restored life to this old French fiddle, Mark Schwartz, Mark Schwartz Violins in Burton, Michigan. Nice guy, and I have to say that he worked really fast. Called him up, hey, do you think you can put some life into my old French fiddle? And he's like, sure can. Might be a couple weeks till I get it done, and I'm like thinking, wow. It's pretty good. He's been working on the violin family of instruments, I think he said for 42 years. Did quick work, did good work at a fair price. So, you know, if you need your fiddle refiddled, think about mailing it off to Mark Schwartz in Burton, Michigan. It's nice. What, what Mark Schwartz did is fixed the varnish and he asked me what do you want it to look like and I said I want it to be cleaned up but I want to keep its old character I want to know this is an old violin and he understood and did that and stabilized the edges and didn't erase this I actually like that um, sound post called me up do you like it on the brighter side or the darker side because I've got a really good violinist that works for me is going to be in Tuesday and I can adjust a sound post. And I said, I like it on the darker side. I don't need a lot of projection. And I usually play in the lower positions. Good, de good deal. Did a nice job carving the bridge. Um, asked me what kind of fittings I wanted. And I said, you know what? Why don't you put that original tail piece that was on it, French style, a hill style tail piece, has a sharp ridge. It's kind of like a like a roof. French style. I like the side. I have a couple violins with the guanare that clamps over the tailpiece. I want it on the side. Mix it up a little bit, you know, in boxwood. It's a light wood. Doesn't inhibit the, the vibrations. In fact, the types of fittings you have, the density of the woods can affect the tone. And even though ebony is a dense, heavier wood. I didn't go with a boxwood tailpiece right off the bat, but I've got something to tell you later. Wanted to retain this, possibly could have been original with the violin. And boxwood pegs. I had the original pegs with it. And I said, those might have been the original pegs that came with the violin. He's like, pegs are like tires. They don't really need to be because they wear out and people replace them. It doesn't need to be original. So I said, you know what? I want Hill style pegs. And W.E. Hill and Sons is an old, old violin making company that has its roots going back to the 1700s. And so you could have had an old Italian violin or an old French or an old German or whatever. And they very well could have used Hill style fixtures on it or fittings doesn't matter tires got you can change tires doesn't matter and so what i like about this first of all the history oh it does my heart good knowing that i've got this violin it was made in the mid 1800s i love the oldness now my char violin chinese workshop carlo lamberti and i hate to break it to you folks but i don't think there was anybody named carlo lamberti i think they just made up an italian name to give it some cred this is an honest violin dominique Salzard, brother francois Salzard. it's an old french firm violin making firm now i'm going to break it to you the Salzards of Miracourt, France, and Paris, they also kind of licensed out their name. So there were factory-made violins 
under the Salzar name, but that's all right. Love the tone. It's got that nice, deep, complex French tone. But I have to say that some of us get tripped up. How's the projection? How's the projection? You have to have the loudest violin in the world. Well, my Char violin, I have to admit, when I'm playing at a jam with electrified instruments, it holds its own. It is a loud violin. But, you know, when I'm playing at home here or playing... For a smaller group, um, like a like a old time jam, you don't need to have the loudest violin. In fact, when I'm playing with a group in a living room with my Char violin, I have to have the mute on. It's just it's too loud. It projects too much. If I was in a concert hall and I was a soloist, which I'll never be, you need that. But the thing is loud. This is not as loud. It doesn't have the greatest projection in the world. It's got a good projection, but you don't always need to have the loudest violin in the room, my friends. And so, I love playing this in the house. I can play softly, not wake up my wife in the morning or at night. Don't necessarily need to mute if I'm in the opposite sides of the house, but I love the tone. I love the playability. It just has a lot of life. in an interesting grain pattern one piece back now you look at these ebony pins those are called pins and they use those basically to kind of you know make sure that you're gluing the back on in the right spot that I don't think there's any pins on the top I, I didn't see any but the ebony ones sometimes were just for show a lot of violins would use these um, registering pins but they would be in maple or something so you wouldn't see them these folks wanted you to see them and adds a little bit of cred to it for those people that are like in awe of all these little details oh they used pins to put that on there it must be a fine violin but these really were for looks looking in here it is fully black the corners have the blocks in them I'm not going to go into details fully lined, nice construction. And Mark Schwartz, when I asked him, Mark, uh, what do you think of this violin? And he goes, it's a nice violin. That's good. He didn't say, well, you know, uh, whatever, or say it's not worth, you know, the money that you are paying me to do it. He said it was a nice violin, so that's good. And we joked around a little bit. It's a nice guy. Um, so I think I did all right. Um, a little heavier than half the price of my Char violin. So for, you know, a little heavier than half the price of a brand new Char Carlo Lamberti Master Series, you can get a cool old fiddle. <coughs> now, excuse me. <coughs> the Black Plague! Just kidding. This fitting right here. I'm looking at it. And even though... Look at the edges. It's a little beaten up. It doesn't... I mean, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. It's not as perfect as that old Saxony made, the German violin I have. They're actually not German. If you were to put a pin where it was made, it would be in Czechoslovakia right now. Greslitz. It's... Some may say it's not as pretty as that one, but I like it because it's got this repaired crack right here. The edges are chewed up. It has a weird grain pattern. I like it because it's got character. It's a, it warms my cockles. I like it a lot. And so, let's talk about fittings. In the late 1700s, there was a person by the name of Jean-Baptiste Viom. V-U-I-L-L-A-U-M-E, I think it is. In Jean-Baptiste Viome. I'm so proud of myself. I looked up on the Googles. How do you pronounce Viliome? Viome. Um, was an inventor. He was a bow maker. And a violin maker. And a collector. He was alive when Dominique Salzard was alive. He was a contemporary in France. I think he might have been in Paris, not Miricourt. But what he did is he, aside from making very 
fine violins. If you wanted to buy a Viom violin, you'd be in it pretty heavy. Carving, tail pieces, chin rests, and ridiculous intricate carving on the pegs. I don't think I'd want to go that far. Pimp my violin, oh yeah. Get Viom fittings or reproductions. But I did kind of fall in love with the tail pieces that he would carve. He collected violins, he had an amazing collection of violins, along with Bill making, I don't know how many, his company produced a lot. Collected two, at least two Stradivari violins, the Messiah and the Lady Blunt. And on the Messiah, the tail piece was carved with uh, the scene of Mary and the baby Jesus and the rest of the people there. Um, and on the Lady Blunt, there was a saint carved on there playing a violin. Probably <clears throat> patron saint of violins. Little carvings here. And so <clears throat> what I did is I found a reproduction that, that you can buy hand carved fittings, you know, made in India in other places. <clears throat> I'm not sure where mine is. Bought it in a place in England, a good violin shop. A carved boxwood. Hopefully it's kind of the same color as this, but boxwood colors vary. Um, the boxwood fittings on my shard Chinese-made violin actually almost look like rosewood. They're so deep and figured, but they're boxwood. Bought a boxwood tail piece with a little feller playing a violin. Or a woman, I don't know. It's hard to tell from a what they identify with on a tailpiece. But that should be in a couple weeks. And I know it's kind of hokey in a way to have a carved tailpiece with a little feller, a little lady playing a violin. But I thought, I like this one so much, I want to really dress it up. You know, with the chewed up edges and the crack there and a little feller playing a violin. Along with the hill style pegs. Now on the Char violin, let's talk fittings. It has heart shaped pegs, which look kind of like this, but there's cuts, carvings in the pegs right here. Just look up heart shaped violin pegs. I kind of like the simplicity of this one style peg. Simplicity, but yet still très élégant. It's a French day. And this along with that little feller playing a fiddle on the tailpiece. But yep, I like it. Now the strings. I didn't go with the most vibrant, loud strings. The Char violin is even louder, more projecting, because it has these strings called, I think they're Enfield vision strings and those are powerful strings as soon as I put those on it was like blah, I play with the muter I'm gonna get a headache because it projects so much these are war cow or war chow ambers which are noted for their mellowness their their woodiness nylon core but they're not the most projecting strings which you know he was like well Mark by the way we're on a first name basis now because I fed his bank account. It's like the Warcow Ambers are nice, mellow, dark, dark. There's dark and then there's bright sounding strings, but they don't project the most. And I go, that's fine. It's going to be a personal violin. I'm going to use it in the house when I'm getting better, um, learning how to bow. And I have to tell you, really, as a self-taught fiddler, that I screwed myself over. I was too much force and I could see that when I was playing songs you know fast hard songs I was breaking five strings on that bow every every session and now I'm not because I'm more of a finesse I'm able to play cleaner and faster and it's just more fun I talked enough I talked enough but what I am gonna do is for you fiddle players out there, not classical violinists. I am not one, although I do appreciate some songs. I'm going to put a link in the description 
And I want you to check that out. This is going to help you. If you're trying to get that authentic fiddling sound, a lot of it is the bowing. The bow is that device which allows you to connect with the violin. It's a lot more important than somebody off the streets believes. They'd say, I want the best violin possible and I'm going to save money so I can put more money into the violin by buying a cheap bow. Mm -mm. There's a ratio. In fact, the, my favorite bow is probably worth more than this. If a burglar was able to slip into this house unknown and, and caught me before I could reach under my bed, I'm not going to say any more than that. Or I'm not going to say any more than that. And gave me the choice. House owner? Or resider of the house? I don't own this house. This is part of the job. I'm going to take that French violin or I'm going to take that bow. My favorite bow. It's Mark W. E. Hill. Let's talk about that a little bit later. I would say <clears throat> leave the gun, take the cannoli or whatever it is. Um, take the violin, leave the bow because I would never be able to replace that bow. You can replace violins you know, given enough horsepower in your bank account, but, you know, you get that favorite bow, that connector to the strings, you'd be hard-pressed to find another one without spending a lot. And I was lucky. I bought mine at an antique shop for almost nothing, you know, along with a broken violin. The antique owner didn't understand the concept that bows are as important than violins, so I scored. Okay, let's talk about bows. My bow is marked W.E. Hill. There's some problems with it. If you take, the frog is that little black thing, and there's a screw that holds it on and tightens the hair. If you were to take that off, flip it over, and look underneath the tip at the ivory or whatever that particular bow material is made out of, pull it back and look underneath the, the hair while the bow is strung so to speak. There's marks on that. W.E. Hill bows are marked. They had a grouping of makers and each maker would mark on that plate on the tip their personal name which was represented by dots or numbers or whatever. Mine is blank. Not a good sign if you're looking for an actual real W.E. Hill bow. When you look at the name W.E. Hill it was always printed upside down. Mine is right side up. So it's not an actual W.E. Hill bow, but the thing is, it is still such a nice bow, even though they stamped it with somebody else's name, that when I was having it rehaired at Char, Char Music or Char Instruments, a while ago, some years ago, they offered to buy it for $1,000, which tells you it's a nice bow, and I paid less than 100 for it in an antique shop. But that is all. That is enough. I need to tell you, though, that my phone is on a little end table, sitting on an envelope so it won't slide, but it's leaning against a can of sea foam. You need to research sea foam. You need to use sea foam. You need to understand the value of sea foam along the violins. Dr. Tong's 3D House of Violins. It's a reference that you should all know.